Cool. Thank you, Jeff. And thank you everyone for having myself here and also my company, Vistro. Um, but anyways, what Vistro is, is we are streamlining the process of how food is ordered, cooked, and delivered, all by building efficient kitchens for the new economy. Um, we'll get a little bit more into that, but we consider ourselves a platform that really has an option for everyone. So looking at ghost kitchens, I'm sure a lot of us here have heard about ghost kitchens, um, but these are kind of the existing models right now. So you kind of have two different directions or perspectives you can take. You have ghost kitchen facility owners. So these are people who build and open large ghost kitchen, kitchen facilities, and then they rent out individual units in these facilities to you know, restaurateurs or chefs, um, people that wanna open delivery only brands. And with these landlords, you know, they're making the same amount of money every month um, just by filling the units they have available. Now, looking at it from the reverse perspective, you have the ghost kitchen space renters, you know, the chefs and restaurateurs. And these are the people that, you know, have an idea, but maybe not the capital to launch a full service restaurant. So they take, you know, the delivery only approach, just renting a kitchen for a small amount of money each month. But the problem is, they only launch one concept in this kitchen, they're gonna be spending 30% of their, essentially what an order costs on food. 15% of that's gonna to go to overhead and their kitchen rent and utilities and other things like that. And then another 30% is labor. And so also the third piece of the puzzle, what they have to rely on is getting this food delivered to their customers. So this is usually Uber Eats, DoorDash or Grubhub, and they're paying 25% commission to these apps on average in order to sell their food and get it delivered. So as you can see, their profit kind of comes down to nothing. And then on both sides, you really have revenues that are capped for the ghost kitchen facility owners. And then, you know, profits being spread really thin for these ghost kitchen space renters. Um, with Vistro, we will be the first vertically stacked company in the food delivery space, meaning we're gonna own our own kitchens. We're gonna own our own brands. We're also gonna process our own deliveries to the best of our abilities. And with this, you know, we're taking a look at our competition here. So most of the competition, some names you've heard of, some names you haven't, um, but no one is quite in the space of really vertically stacking their operation and owning everything end to end. And a large part of why we wanna do this is to really maintain adaptability for ever-changing consumer preferences and demands. Uh, we really wanna have a close eye on quality and distribution, being able to control those measures as well as possible. And of course, being able to achieve higher margins and better profits as a business. So specifically, another area we're targeting in this industry through what Vistro is going to provide is there's a lot of times when people ordering food, everyone wants something different, whether it's someone wanting breakfast, another person wanting a burger, someone wanting pasta, and someone else wanting salad. On Uber Eats, DoorDash, and Grubhub, this is not an option. You cannot mix multiple restaurants on the same order. It's virtually impossible right now. So with Vistro, we introduce a virtual food court. And this is, you know, there's something for everyone. Once turns into get. So, you know, so-and-so gets breakfast for dinner. So-and-so gets a burger, a salad, or a pasta, whatever it is, all done through our platform. And what we've done as a company as well, we've developed uh, around 10 brands to this day, 10 fully developed menus and brands. We've tested a couple in the market, which I'll get to later in the presentation. But the best part about this is customers can combine multiple Vistro restaurants on the same order and everyone can get what they want. So kind of how our business model works now, I've told you about ghost kitchens, I've told you about, you know, the pains with ordering in groups. Um, what we plan to do to start off our business is sell all of our food items or menus on DoorDash, Grubhub and Uber Eats. What we're going to do is we're going to slowly transition people from ordering off these platforms because it's super easy to get customers, the customer acquisition cost is low, and it's just plentiful, full of customers. Um, we're going to get them to slowly transfer to Vistro uh, through various handouts, marketing promotions. But basically, when they order through our app, they can get multiple restaurants in the same cart. They can get cheaper delivery fees, um, all because, you know, we're kind of vertically stacked and we can take hits in certain areas where other restaurants can't. So they order their food. It's then prepared in our efficient kitchen. Now this is specifically designed and modified to handle high volume, um, high volume delivery only orders. And so with this kitchen, we've actually been able to get it to the point where we can have 10 brands in here, each brand doing an order about every six to eight minutes, which is super good. Um, and then what happens is it goes off to a delivery driver, whether it's our delivery driver or say we don't have a staff available or we're too busy, we can always contract out third party delivery drivers as well. 
and then the food arrives at the residence of who ordered it. Um, so talking a little more specifically about these this food, um, these are all menu concepts we cook weekly or a couple times a month. And yeah, we test them constantly. We also test them live in the market uh, we have back in February. And so what we do is we really try to combine as many ingredients as possible so that we can spread those ingredients across as many menus as possible. And what that allows us to do is essentially have 10 brands under one roof. We have less storage, more ingredient combination, and it also leads to less food waste. And what we're doing with this efficient kitchen is we're really proving that we can handle more menu concepts, more demands, more delivery than any other kitchen that exists in this space today. So kind of looking at the market, you know, it's huge. Two out of three people right now order food delivery at least once a week. And with the average food order coming in at $20, let's fast forward and look at the United States in four years from now, a little less than four years. So with that being said, we're showing that the United States can really handle um, $240 billion in revenue a year. And that's about half of what we expect this industry to hit by 2025. And so our serviceable addressable market is really gonna be $80 billion a year. A third of these people who are ordering online delivery, um, we found that a third of these people prefer to, you know, kind of seek out other platforms and try, you know, ordering from different sites or possibly directly from the restaurant. And so we take that number and then we're like, okay, feasibly we can target 1% of this and the demand of our kitchen can also handle 1% of this. Um, and so that being $800 million a year, which would be 1% of our SAM, which is around 40 million orders a year, $20. Um, and we would need 600 locations in you know, four years time to support these numbers. But that's just kind of a general idea of the market and where we see it going over the next four years. Um, so again, talking a little more about competition, uh, really we focus on doing kitchens, brands, and delivery. We own the kitchens, we own and create our own brands provide our own delivery. No one in the space is doing this as of yet. You see DoorDash and Uber Eats kind of moving into the kitchen space, but they're really you know, just renting the space out or licensing other brands to cook. Uh, so we are really the only company in this space doing everything in a vertically stacked fashion from kitchen brands to delivery. And with this, you know, we're really trying to set the bar for Ghost Kitchen's abil ability to scale, adapt, and maximize profits because a lot of people are doing it, but no one's seeing crazy profit margins yet. Um, kind of where we came from, you know, this February of 2021, we started three virtual restaurants. This is the birth of Bistro. Uh, with these three restaurants, we were able to generate $30,000 a month in revenue, so $10,000 a month each. Uh, yeah, and you know, over 3,000 orders. These are three menus we came up with and essentially we would partner with an existing restaurant who's a little bit more struggling in sales because of COVID or whatever those circumstances were. They would cook the food, we would sell it online, profits were split accordingly. Um, and then actually a week and a half, two weeks ago, we launched our kind of inter interim service, Vigo. What this is, is consumer goods delivery. We deliver everything from a gas station. And we focused heavily on the university area and that geographic region. And we killed it our launch week. And we had over 200 orders within two days um, just after making available, like, hey, this is what we do. We're a local company and get anything you need from us. Um, snacks, food, convenience, drinks, whatever it is. So what we're moving into now is our efficient kitchen. And this is like we talked about, you know, 10 menus under one roof, our own staff. We're going to handle a ton of delivery volume and demand. Um, so to date, you know, we have around 500 users. Our customer acquisition cost so far has really been around $5 uh, with a churn rate of 10%. And so, yeah, you know, we've started building this efficient kitchen. Plans are into the city. We're waiting on approvals. And we're building our customer base now through Vigo. Um, so where are we going next? You know, right now we're raising our pre-seed round to successfully launch our first location and fuel growth towards our seed round. So at Vistro, we have menus developed. We have our platform ready. Our first location is funded and almost in development. We're just waiting on approval. So we're going to launch it. We're going to approve our model. We're targeting around 1.2 to $1.4 million a year in revenue. Super conservative based on the data we have. Then we're gonna raise a seed round and build more of these and expand to tier two and tier three cities. Uh, we've also incorporated an offsite modular manufacturing partnership, which will allow us to build these containers. At the same time we're developing land, which increases our build time and launch time that much more. 
Uh, we wouldn't be doing this without a great team in the space too. So it's myself, I have a co-founder, Derek Sorensen. Um, we also have a great team of advisors with key experience in the areas that we need. So platform growth, uh, marketplace growth, and cozy meals. Um, we have old Uber execs. We have experience in people that have worked with various software companies. We have a chef advisor as well. And of course, legal and real estate advice to make sure we're making good decisions on those ends too. But um, yeah. yeah, considering all that, I'm sorry for the time limit, um, but we are raising $500,000 right now for a pre-seed round. We've already raised 200,000. You can see here how we plan on spending 500,000 uh, for our next kitchen, working capital, hires, and technology. But thank you very much, and I appreciate your patience. Apologies for going a little bit over the time limit, but thank you again, and I was happy to share our company with you.